So now that we understand that a MOSFET actually can act like a current source and your current source device, we want to start asking questions about basic circuits. And what we find is that there's really four fundamental, I would say one transistor and a current source circuits that you can come up with. And those of you who have classic circuits have probably seen much of this, but now I think there's a very simple way and framework to think about the ideas here. Whereas, you know, you have a current source just like this, which is really going to be another transistor, and we are kind of know how to look at this. So why is this kind of a topology interesting? Well, I'm going to have cases of voltage input and voltage output. Very straightforward. Now, remember in saturation, I'm just going to put over here, in saturation for an NFET, we kept everything in NFETs, it all works for PFETs just the same. And what you can imagine now is I'm going to have a current that's going to be a threshold current, which, by the way, threshold current is a very weak temperature dependence. So if we're trying to ask temperature questions, this also works nicely, is then kappa VG and then VS and sigma VD. Well, if I constrain current, what am I doing? I'm effectively going to be making this fixed, which then fixes, which then means I can divide that by threshold current, take the log of that, which gives me a constant. It's not supposed to change. And what I'm saying is everything in this Everything in this numerator, everything in this exponential just doesn't change. The sum of it doesn't change. You can divide out the UT and every all the voltages change. This is actually really pretty amazing when you think about it, because what it says is that the sum of everything here has to be constant. And so if I look at the core circuits, it's actually pretty straightforward what's actually being done. Is to say, let me actually take one of the terminals, such as in the source follower, I'll actually make the drain voltage fixed which means I make it basically fix, which is then adds the constant, so it's basically zero. And I just see the change between the gate voltage and the source voltage. That that equal to a constant and, and just look at the change and I get the gain falls out directly. It's linear. It's actually very easy to solve for as well. It's linear. It's also fairly insensitive to temperature. Fairly amazing concept when you look at this. Um, I could do the same thing for all of these topologies. So let me walk through them carefully. When I look at a source follower, this is a classic case where you'd expect it to be low gain and non-inverting. And the gain I get is kappa here. Now, for those of you who've done classic circuits and think that gain should be 1, well, remember, this is typically assuming that they would assume that kappa ex existed equal to 1, and then I've got this ma magical VGS term. Uh, it's one of the first circuits that you see right off the bat that shows you that this is probably not the right kind of model to think about. And one of the places it gets you right from the very beginning. When I look at the common drain, this is now having an input into the gate voltage and looking at the drains. And I, this is where, remember, the drain has a much weaker effect due to its sigma. <clears throat> and so as a result, I expect put the source voltage equal to zero. And I should expect to see something like kappa over sigma. But since there's a plus sign, I also, to solve it, I actually get an inverting sign out of here. This is an inverting configuration. For those who've done even things like CMOS inverters, you probably recognize that there's an inversion there, and this is very useful for a wide range of circuits, particularly even digital logic. This is the kind of same approach you get. I also get two different cases of common gate circuits, one of which is the input goes in the source, and the output is the drain. And again, that would mean this is being held fixed, so it's just these two terms. Not surprisingly, it again is 1 over sigma. Again, a nice high gain configuration, something we will see used a number of places. One of the classic places people talk about it is in a cascode where I can get a good high gain behavior between here to here. But I can also take the reverse case, which is also related in cascode circuits. Uh, let me put the input voltage into the drain and actually have the output output be the source. And this seems a little bit strange, but it's actually, and you kind of go, what's the gain from there to there? Whereas the first two cases, I got, you know, I got a gain near one, a gain very large but inverting, a gain very large but not inverting. In this case, I get a gain this times sigma, and sigma is a small term. So now what it means is if I make a large change in the input voltage, I get almost no change in the output voltage. Well, this is actually useful if I want to buffer this output voltage from the input voltage. And this is something we see when we build cascode circuits. It's, it's it probably the dominant way you think about it is how do I use the source of this transistor to fix a node. The other place you see this a lot is if you're talking about things like voltage references or, or say, low dropout regulators. This is actually almost inherently a low dropout regulator if you can bias and run the circuit correctly. And it also turns out when I look at all these circuits, I can also ask what is the time constant in a small signal sense. 
um, in the sense of if I put a small signal in the input and ask, okay, what, how, what's the time constant and how this settles? Um, it's hard to talk about time constant in a large case, large signal case, but we will get into those questions as well. But this is how it would turn out. Again, you could actually directly compute this, and one is either whether it's I'm looking into a source as of the transistor in this case or in this case, or if I'm looking at the drain side, that would give me these two terms in terms of a just standard capacitance being hanging out on the load load device. Now, what's interesting is in many cases you can spend days, weeks, months of lecture going through each of these kinds of concepts in great depth. And people often do that. But what I also find amazing is most people don't actually look at the overall structure that actually makes this pretty easy to understand. And once you understand the fundamentals, you can now use these as, as framework circuits to kind of build up to more complex structures.